Hello! Looking for a duo base? Have I got the goods for you today? And not just any duo base, the Duo Dream! An absolute tank of a duo base with staying power way above its upkeep level. See, we got a roomy and well defended compound, wide gap shooting floors, We got three secret bunkers up on the shooting floor, well away from most raid paths, so you can survive most offlines and soldier on like the champ that you are. Honestly can't tell you how many wipes these saved for me. Up here we have these neat raid defense bedrooms, complete with gorgeous roof peaks. And there's a handy mini garage drone chop combination on top. Pretty good, pretty good. So that's what we technically call the outside bits of the base, and as for the inside bits, the ground floor airlock takes us to a chute leading to the third floor. Inside you can fit about as many garage doors as you can craft to make door raiding an extreme pain and there's actually great storage capacity for a duo with protected loot rooms that double as honeycomb. Not to mention some optional tricks that will befuddle the bejesus out of most trust players. Ah, cool isn't it? And so, full of tricks and features, big, beautiful, super resilient, and very cheap for what you get, this is the Duo Dream! Let's build it, shall we? We start with two triangles, one of which will be our TC compartment, with a single door. Then add three triangle foundations to the right, three to the left, and walls all around. Now here we're gonna have a nice windowed loot room, but don't place the window frame yet. Turning around, add a single door frame to the left here. This will later house a vending machine, but for now, furnaces. And to the right, place a furnace or your workbench, which after adding a few doors will allow us to jump up to the second floor. Up top, add a simple triangle chute. Oh, and this triangle is our TC compartment. Honeycomb it on both sides. Good, good! Now let's add a bit more storage room. To the left of the door, it's gonna be a single triangle loot room. Then a three triangle loot room. And a double door here will serve as our new main entrance. Alright, this is what we got so far. And when ready, we're going to freehand foundations on these three sides. This will allow us to later add very sneaky bunkers to the base. First you prepare by adding twig bits here, here, and here. These will both restrict and guide your freehand placement to make sure it's as good as can be. You want a square that attaches to the base here but not there, so give it a tiny angle. It'll also need to be a tiny bit lower than the rest of the base. Use this twig foundation as a guide. Now see if you can place a wall. If you can't, the foundation is likely a bit too high. Otherwise, make sure that the wall is 79% stable and that there's no gap here. Next, replace the square with triangles by doing this. And if everything checks out, well, congrats! You've just freehanded! Get rid of everything except for these foundations, which you upgrade. Upgrade these walls and foundations here and add a two-level metal wall. Now do the same here and here, and off we go to complete the core of the base. Right out of the new front door, add a loot room to the left, and to the right, a roof exit. Now when closing the top, make sure to attach the triangles not to the Now when closing the top, make sure to attach the triangles not to the free-handed wall, 
but rather to the core. And of course, add a roof shoot. I'd also recommend at this point to upgrade every outside facing tile. This will also help conceal any minor freehanding inaccuracy. And now that our base entrance is quite high, improvised means of entry no longer suffice. And so, left of the chute, drop down and make a windowed airlock entrance like so. If you have a large gap here, cover it with a frame. And add a door. Oh, if the door frame is giving you sass, try from the other side. And at the other two free-handed sections, no entrances, but rather a three-floor high stone honeycomb like so. Next, you have these flat sides, right? Add triangle foundations and honeycomb like so, two levels high. And now the third floor. First, let's wall ourselves in. Now, you can honestly do whatever you want with this space, but here's how I do it. First, to the left of the chute, I add a wall and a door frame which will later house a vending machine. Now going all the way around, a single wall, and here I like having a kind of rec room for a passive healing. Behind which we have a ladder hatch to get up to the shooting floor. Followed by a single door creating a secondary airlock. Then, to the left, a loot room and a furnace room, huddling together to warm each other up on those cold rust nights. Repeating that setup again here. And in this corner, a single triangle loot room, all by its lonesome. What are you saying? Oh, I didn't mean anything by it. You don't know what it's like. Look, I'm s Go ahead, open a box. Uh, are you sure? Mm, yes, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I see. They don't trust me with the good stuff. Listen, I liked you from the moment I saw you. I never thought you're inconvenient. I got 84 slots of storage! That's almost three large boxes, in one triangle! I know, you're supremely efficient. Nobody seems to care. You know something, Lutrum? What? You got a friend in me. And I like this setup specifically since I can fit a lot of garage doors in here, making door raids very unpleasant. Now, you probably don't need that many, but it's good to know you have options. And lastly for this stage, the obligatory roof chute. Alright, so this is where we are at the moment, in terms of upkeep and so on. And in the second stage of the build, I'll show you how and what to upgrade. Including a cool little trick. Ready? Let's make this one short and sweet. Starting at the core, upgrade the TC compartment. If you cannot reach some of the tiles, use this console command. Look at radius 0.01. And here's an optional trick you can use at your own risk. First, make sure the TC is close to the front and right, like this. Destroy and rebuild if necessary. Add an armored door opening outwards. And place a vending machine like so. If done right, you should be able to access the TC and even the lock. Now, there are some ways to get around this when raiding, but all of them are still quite expensive. More info in the video description. That said, it's sure to completely fool most casual Rust players who don't know much about building. And if you want to be even more deceptive, you can do the same here. Now again, of course, this is optional. You can use it if you like. I just have this issue where in every new base I need to show new tricks. 
And this is quite an effective way of using your honeycomb. This workbench will have to go though, use a ladder hatch instead. And there you have perfect honeycomb utilization. Now as for HQM upgrades, these are the ones I'd recommend for the core, if you can afford it. But for a duo I'd say it's optional. You can actually save up the HQM and use it on the bunkers instead later on, which may be even more cost effective. Again, you do you. But do make sure that every tile is at least sheet metal, excepting door frames. Oh, and you can close the loot room now. Doing it before would have interfered with vending machine placement. Now on the second floor, if I were to upgrade anything, it'd be the window frames for splash separation. And these floors. Again, these are the best options, but don't be HQMing stuff if it's gonna make you feel like you're struggling with upkeep. Mm, yeah, that's good. And on the third, I guess you could upgrade this wall. The door path floors, maybe. Generally, the more doors you install, the more upgrades you should make. So this is where we are now. And in the final stage, we'll bring this baby up to its fullest potential with a compound, wide gap shooting floors and three secret bunkers. Ready? All right, so first let's see about the compound. From the free-handed sections, build out two squares and a triangle, returning with triangles like so. Now build out this formation. And finally here, a TC compartment. This, by the way, is a Satori-type disconnectable TC. And this is a simple 8-rocket compartment, but given this information, an upgrade wouldn't be out of order, at least for the first one you build. When done, connect back like so. If your main TC gets destroyed in a raid, just disconnect this, rebuild main TC, and reconnect. Next up, my ultra-efficient Pico Gatehouse. By the way, I have a whole gatehouse tutorial which you might want to check out. Here I'm adding a turret compartment which is absolutely optional. Done on all three sides, it's gonna look like this. And I do suggest practicing the high wall placement since compounds are easy to screw up but difficult to fix. Next up, shooting floor. Add a couple of frames here. And on top, build a part of the shooting floor like so. And with the shooting floor closed in, time for bunkers. See this little gap here? Well, start by upgrading these floors and proceed to establish a bunker compartment like so. Oh, and make sure to rotate this frame, very important. Then one garage door and close. To access the juicy spoils within, place a triangle roof here, which you will never upgrade. And this is how I'd set them up. Fill them with build mats, some kits, maybe some boom, whatever you'll need to quickly rebuild and get back in the game with minimum hassle in case you get raided. And a triangle tile on top will conceal the freehanding gap. You'll know you did it right if the bunker stays open. And of course you can HQM the bunkers individually. So that's three bunkers done, leaving us with this space to fill. Extending the door path to the core is a good idea. An airlock to the shooting floor is also a pretty good idea, I guess. 
and I want to say Lutrum, yeah. I'm, I'm winging it, as you can see. You can have beds and stuff here, you do you. But you know what, either way, when you're done, close the roof. Well, except for these parts, where we'll now establish bedrooms and roof peaks. Not much to say here, just try and follow. Locker goes flush against the wall, and the bed exactly like this, which turns out is a roof peak. Oh, just make sure the bed doesn't clip through the garage door when closed. Perfect. Now we just add this, and these, and of course never build on top of the bunker walls, as that would break the bunker mechanism. That said, however, some kind of general purpose room here will help against top downs and bunker splashability. And of course, you can fit a minicopter in there if you push it in backwards. So that's it, we are done. The Duo Dream! I hope you really enjoy using it. I also hope you get over the freehanding learning curve quickly. It does require some practice, I won't lie. But as you can see, it opens up some really incredible bunker options. And of course, I'd love it very much if you leave me a like, and if you want more of this type of content, and tons of Rust building tips and knowledge, subscribe to my channel and watch the videos therein. I hope very much to see you again soon. And until then, goodbye for now, and blessed be.